for the reduction reaction taking place. Okay, question 11. The equation for the reduction reaction taking place when ethanol reacts with Toland's region is. Okay, so I'm afraid you're just going to, that's something you're going to have to know. Okay, so Toland's, Toland's is your silver mineral. Okay, and from that you should straight away be going, well, it must be this one. Okay, just if you needed to do it by um, by elimination. Uh, copper is involved in Benedict's and Fellings. Uh, this is dichromate and for C and D is permanganate. Tolens is a silver mirror. Yeah, that's the only thing we need to know. Okay, you're asked to name a compound. So we have, start with our basic basic things we do. So we want the longest chain containing the functional group. So we can go one, two, three, four, five. Okay. So we agree with pent. Okay. All of these see pent. We're like, okay. And then you're going to have to number, but numbering from the end, which allows you to keep the functional group at the smallest. So that's going to be one. That's going to be two, three, four, five. So pentan two. Okay. And it's in between two carbons, so it's an own. Well, we're, we're there already, actually. Okay, but just to check, we have got a methyl off number three, we've got a methyl off number four, so three, four, dimethyl, pentan, two own, is why that's C. Okay, a little bit of work in this one, actually, but as long as you don't panic, you're fine. Right, because they've given you a lot of the data. 2 grams of calcium carbonate was reacted with 200 centimetres cubed of 0.1 molar nitric. Take the volume of 1 mole of carbon dioxide to be 24 litres in the reaction and then we've got some information. Right, this is an excess question to start with. So let's do the excess for this. So CaCO3, okay, so we're looking for the moles of that. Moles is mass divided by formula mass. Okay, you're told it's 2 divided by 100. So I have 0 0.02 moles. Okay, so by this equation, it's a 1 to 2 for the calcium carbonate to my nitric acid. So that would mean that I need to have, I need 0 0.04, okay, for this not to be in excess. So let's have a look at the um, nitric acid. So the nitric acid... So we're looking for moles as concentration times volume. Concentration is 0 0.1 and our volume is 0.2. Okay, so 0 0.02, but I needed 0 0.04. Okay, so we are looking at that and we're saying categorically, right, um, we are saying that the excess is in this one here, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to use all of this, all of the 0 0.02 of this, but we're only going to use 0 0.01 of the calcium carbonate. So I'm going to be left with 0 0.01 moles of that. I'm going to make 0 0.01 moles of, of this, 0 0.01 moles of that, and 0 0.01 moles of that. Okay, to do the information they've got for here for the mass, so if I want to work out the mass of this that I'm producing, it's a hundredth of 164. Okay, so that's going to be uh, 1.64 grams of this I make. And I'm going to make a hundredth of 24 litres. Okay, so 24,000 centimetres cubed. And I'm going to make a hundredth of that. So I'm going to make 240 centimetres cubed. So you can do... A, quite a lot of that without actually really probably having to go to a calculator at all. So let's check this. Calcium carbonate is the limiting reactant. No. Okay. Because what we're seeing here is that um, our limit was actually our nitric acid. Okay. An excess of 0.1 moles of nitric acid remains. No. I've got an excess of calcium carbonate. 1.64 grams of calcium nitrate is produced by the reaction. Yep, I agree with that. And to be very clear, um, 480 centimetres cubed, that's incorrect. It's only 240. So oh, so that would mean that you'd done the 0 0.02 rather than the 0 0.01. Okay. Question 14. The mean bond enthalpy of a carbon to fluorine bond is 484 kilojoules per mole. In which of the processes is delta H approximately equal 
to plus 1936. Okay, so um, let's divide 1936 by 484. Okay, and what that tells me is that I'm looking at four bonds. Okay, so I'm looking at four carbon to fluorine bonds. And then I need to find something, remember this is plus, okay? So just a normal reaction pathway, you break and then you make. So you go plus and then minus. So my break is the plus. So if I'm looking for this, I need to break four carbon to fluorine bonds. So let's have a look. Let's find something where I'm doing that. So the only thing that fits nicely is B. Okay, 15 because I didn't space that one as perfectly as I wanted to. In a reversible reaction, equilibrium is reached when? Okay, so okay, this, is, this came up in the year before's paper as well. They like this question, obviously. Right, so when we are looking at an equilibrium, you need to remember that this one is the rates of reaction. Okay, when the rates of the forward and back are equal, then you have reached equilibrium, okay? When the concentration of A and B and the concentration of C and D stop changing, they are therefore constant, but not necessarily equal, then those that's also equilibrium, okay? So molecules of reactants cease to change. That can't be happening because what's happening is we're always changing some, it's just that we're changing the same number back, so not A. Concentration of reactants and products are equal. No, be very careful of this one. The rates of the forward and back are equal but not the concentrations, okay? The concentrations of reactants and products are constant, yes, okay? And again, not necessarily equal. And just to check, the activation energy of the forward reaction is equal to that of the reverse reaction. Well, that's not true. If I did a little pathway one, uh, let's go for an exothermic reaction, okay? Here is my activation energy for the forward. Here is my activation energy for the back. They are definitely different, okay? And that doesn't change during the equilibrium formation. Which of the following reactions represents the enthalpy of combustion of propane? Okay, by definition, the enthalpy of combustion is the complete... Oh, sorry, let me just restart that one. My mouse is getting in the way of the of me doodling. Okay, so propane is... Now I've got rubber, I don't want... Okay, there we go. Propane C3H8, okay, plus oxygen. It's a hydrocarbon, so I'm going to get carbon dioxide and water. Right, standard way of doing this, you balance your carbons forward, you balance your hydrogens forward, and then you balance your oxygens back. Okay, so I'm going to carbon, three carbon dioxides, four waters, and then I'm going to say that I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I just need five oxygens. Okay, um, just to be clear on why the other ones are wrong, this one's carbon monoxide, which is incorrect. Um, this one just doesn't balance. Um, oh, it's because they've not put this as water and this one is not as water either. Okay, and, oh, and it's carbon monoxide. There's so much wrong on D. Right, a partly definition, but also one that people generally don't like. Okay, so an oxidising agent, okay, if it's oxidised, okay, so oxidising agent made something oxidation is loss, made something lose, which meant it had to gain. Okay, so it's been reduced and gained electrons. So an oxidizing agent uh, gains electrons and is reduced. Okay. Okay, question 18. During a redox process in acid solution, chlorate ions are converted into chlorine. Uh, we've got a nice little equation, number of H plus and H2O. Right, so you can be asked to do the whole thing, but they're actually not even asking you to go the whole way for this one. So let's just put this down. Right, so the reason this is sneaky is because we have to start by putting two to balance off the chlorine. Right, and now we do our standard. Now our standard is, okay, it's oxygen with water, and then we do hydrogen with hydrogen, and then we do charge with electrons. That's your three steps, as long as we started off with your basic balance at the top, okay, which is why we did the two. Okay, so oxygens, we need to balance with 
um, water. So I've got three oxygens here, so I'm going to put, sorry, I've got six oxygens here, so I'm going to put six waters on this side, okay? And then I need to balance my hydrogens with hydrogen ions. I have 12 of these, so I'm going to put 12 H+. Plus. Now I can stop right there because it asks me for the H plus and the H2O and it asks me for the H plus first. So that's 12 and six. Just to be clear, okay, the charge on this side is plus 10. Okay, because I've got 12 pluses and then I've got two minuses here and the charge on this side is zero. So if I needed to actually do the full thing, I would put 10 electrons in here to balance off the charge. Question 19, I've had to go and get the whole standard um, electrons, although I don't know if I need that far up, but anyway, that's fine. Okay, so we're trying to oxidise iodide ions to iodine. So let's find the iodide ions. Here we are, they're over here. Okay, right, so this is on the right-hand side, so my right thumb would be on that one. Okay, so what I need is for whatever's on the other side needs to be below it on this side, so I need to be one of these guys, okay? So SO4, two minus, no, not gonna work, it's too high. SO3, two minus, not only is it too high, it's on the wrong side, okay? CR3 plus, let's find my chromium, 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 wrong side, but it is lower down, and CR2O7, that is on the correct side, and lower down so that okay question 20 uh, we've got iodine solution in that purette sorry I'm trying to get that to sit nicely right there we go um, a student was carrying out a titration to establish the concentration of vitamin C using iodine solution which of the following would help the student achieve a precise endpoint so that means being able to stop it exactly as it turns okay so all of these are things that you would say are good things to do but the one that's going to allow you to say, right, that's it, it's definitely gone right now, is the white tile. Okay, the reading the bottom of the meniscus would is essential just to give you a good, um, a good set of data. However, with iodine solution, if it's a, if it's a concentrated one, that's difficult to read anyway. Uh, repeated titrations it makes it more reliable, and carrying it a rough titration, it's just good practice so that you've got a good set of data. Okay, that's the multiple choice from that year.